Building on top of our knowledge of spawning, which if you haven't caught up on the new 0.16 APIs in Bevy, check out the spawning in Bevy 0.16 video. We're writing a small program here that explicitly uses the spawn APIs that the children macro compiles to. This is because children and child of is the first relationship we'll be examining. In this video, we'll be covering the basics of relationships. So we'll talk a little bit about what they are, how to spawn them, and how to query them, but not how to do manual implementations. So if we take a look at the relationship docs, and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see something that looks a lot like the parent children or what is now known as child of children relationship that exists in Bevy today. This is not exactly that relationship. There's a lot of other code associated with it, but it's close enough for our purposes. When implementing a relationship, there are two components that define that relationship, the relationship component itself and the relationship target component. The relationship component, which is child of in this case, is the one that you'll be inserting on entities while the relationship target, which is children in this case, is maintained by Bevy automatically. We never grab this and mutate it or add or remove entities to this spec. This functionality and the way this works is supported by the new immutable components. So whenever you insert a child of component, a component hook fires and updates the corresponding relationship target component. So if you insert child of on an entity, the entity that you reference will have a children component inserted onto it and that entity that has the child of will get inserted into this spec. So with that, and if you've watched the spawning logic video, we can actually understand what's going on here in our spawning logic. We're spawning a little cube in here with a transform and some other components, especially these names so that we can look at them later. And we're spawning in some children, which are these two bundles down here. So we end up with this cube with a left eye and a right eye. And because children and child of are associated with the transform hierarchy in Bevy, we're just kind of proving that they are in fact part of the same hierarchy by moving the root transform of the cube back and forth because the eyes are now children. But now that we know how the spawning logic works because we watched the spawning logic video and we're talking about relationships specifically, it's time to dive a little bit deeper into what this spawn function on children actually is. And that's this spawn function from spawn related. So children being the relationship target implements this spawn related trait and is what allows us to call that spawn function. We scroll all the way down in the spawn related trait, you can see that it's implemented for T where T implements relationship target. And as we just talked about, children is the relationship target in this relationship. This spawn function doesn't exactly return a children with a VEC in it, but you can roughly think about it doing that. So if you have children spawn here, you can imagine that this children component or the children component that's going to be created is going to get inserted onto this entity that we're spawning here. Whereas the children that will be in the VEC are going to be these entities, the bundles that we're passing in. So the spawn function returns a bundle that contains the logic for inserting that children component, which will be pre-allocated with the necessary space for the list of entities that we have highlighted here that we're giving it. So the end result is the same. The entity we insert children spawn onto will get a children component on it filled with the related entities. Because we're using children spawn and because children and child of or that relationship any bundle wrapped in spawn here will automatically get a child of component inserted onto it. This is actually what results in a set of entities with references to the parent entity. And I've installed Bevy Inspector eGUI for this, and we're gonna look for little cube here. So I'm just gonna filter us down to little cube. I'll open that up and we'll look at the children, which are left eye and right eye. So we are definitely getting these child of components in here, which then themselves reference the parent little cube. And actually I've written some code here, which I will close out the running of. So when I hit the spacebar in this application, it prints out the name of the current component, specifies the entity that it's a child of by printing out the child of component and grabs the parent name. So in this case, right eye is a child of entity 7v1, which is little cube. And left eye is also a child of 7v1, which is little cube. This logic comes from this function right here, which is fairly small. It's querying for all entities that have a child of component and a name, in which case, that will match because these entities have names and by using children spawn, we are inserting child of onto these entities when we spawn the rest of the components. So this is where we're getting both of the eyes. Then we just have a query for all names so that when we iterate over these and we have each of these child of components, we can grab the parent entity and we can log out if there's a name associated with it. In this case, there definitely will be, so we're not really worried about it because that's the way we've constructed the example. So to drive the point home before we get into how to define your own relationships, we can rewrite this example. In this case, the example that before, if we scroll down here, was one solid block here 
where we spawned little cube. We used the children's spawn to spawn in these related entities, which got the child of component. We can actually just do that ourselves. So we can spawn in the entity that is the parent and grab the ID of that entity, which uh, if you look at the types, gives us that entity as little cube. And if we look at the other entities that we're spawning, we're actually just manually specifying child of with that entity on each of them. So this is the exact same behavior. And to prove that we can look at the running application again, look at little cube, which I will filter down to once again, and look at the children and we see the children there with the child of. And again, we have the same logs here. So the right eye is a child of 7v1, which is little cube. Now we can totally confirm this actually by commenting that out and running the example again. So now you can see the behavior has changed. The eyes are static, they're staying in place and the cube is moving. And that's because we have little cube here, but little cube doesn't have any children because the right eye and the left eye weren't spawned with those child of components and thus are not related to the cube and are up on the root by themselves, right? So they are no longer transforms that are children of that parent cube and thus are not affected by this cube moving back and forth. So that leaves us with an interesting question. If we can insert child of to get that relationship constructed for us, can we remove it? And I've written a system down here called remove child of, which grabs the commands and looks for any entity with a child of on it and removes them all. So we are removing the child of component specifically from everything. So we've got our child of back in our hierarchy. We'll run this again and watch what happens. So right now we have children, right eye, left eye and watch what happens when we remove that component. You can see that the left eye and the right eye are gone and they've populated the top level. So they have been removed from the hierarchy just by removing the child of relationship component. And little cube no longer has a children component because there are no children. So just to show that again, you can look at this list here. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna press the button and the right eye and the left eye are gonna pop out of that hierarchy right up into the root because they're no longer associated with little cube. And that entire behavior is just the removal of the relationship component, this source of truth component, where if child of exists on the entity, then it has a parent. If it doesn't exist, then it will be removed from any children vex that it was a part of. So if child of and children make a relationship, we can still consider them a little bit special because Bevy already relies on them to help propagate transforms. And due to how core they are in the scene hierarchies, that's part of the reason that when we look for things in Bevy Inspector eGUI, this is organized by parent-child, right? This is organized by that transform hierarchy. It's not organized by any other relationship. So we can sit here and create our own relationship. We'll build a new item of component, which will be our relationship, our source of truth, along with a new inventory component, which will be our relationship target. This means we'll be able to insert item of on new items to associate them with the player or little cube in this case. The little cube will automatically get an inventory component then filled with the items that we are saying it owns, the items in its inventory. And we're doing this through macros. So we're saying the relationship here uses the target inventory and relationship target here uses the relationship item of. Using the relationship macros implies using immutable components. So we don't have to specify that manually. So if we go take a look at our spawning logic, we can see that we've got little cube, we've got the children macro, with the two eyes on it. This is all the transform hierarchy, the parent child, the chil child of children related stuff, right? This is all the stuff that we expect to see when we open these uh, little displays inside of Bevy Inspector eGUI, because this is giving us that parent child relationship view. But note that bars cloud cross down here, the items are not part of that hierarchy, right? They don't, they aren't related to transform at all. So here, instead of using the children macro, we're using inventory spawn, right? So we you were using children spawn when we started the video. Now we're using inventory spawn because this spawn function, again, comes from that trait, which means it's available for any relationship target. So when we spawn here, we're doing the same thing. We're spawning three new entities here with three new bundles. In this case, I've loosely defined an item type as having a name and a display image, which is just a component that holds a handle. So when we do this, these bundles that we're spawning are automatically getting an item of component, which associates them with this parent that we're spawning here and inserts them into the inventory component on that parent. So given that we've spawned this, we can then query for either inventory or item of. In this case, I've chosen to query for item of. 
So if I hit space over here on the left, and then we look at the output, the running application has an item name of bars. It's an item of 7v1, which is the little cube. So the little cube has a bars, a cloud, and a cross. And that's again being handled by querying for any entities that have this item of component and a name. We also have this slightly more interesting function called remove item of. In this case, we're again querying for this item of component alongside the display image and the name, as well as the entity ID. Remember name and display image are the two components that we spawned on those entities, right? These bundles up here are names and display images and item of, because we spawned those with inventory spawn, item of got inserted automatically for us. So here, what we happen to be doing is grabbing whatever the next item is in the inventory. In this case, we only have one inventory in our entire application. So this is the item of for that inventory. We could theoretically have multiple inventories for multiple entities, in which the case this query would be dropping a random one out of any of those inventories. But for now, this works for us. We grab whatever the next item we're going to process is, we get the global transform, and we remove that relationship component here, item of, which takes it out of the inventory automatically, and we insert a little cube on it with the position of wherever the cube happened to be, our, our, little, our little cube. Wherever the little cube happened to be, because we're querying for this global transform and we're getting that using the inventory holder, right? Item of zero or like child of parent would be another way to think about this, right? So the entity that is holding the inventory, we're getting the transform of that parent entity or that, you know, it's not a parent, but the item holder, the inventory holder talking about this does get a little bit confusing. But once we've got that transform, we know where little cube is and we can use that to spawn in effectively this mesh 3D and material 3D. So if we run this again and I bring this up over here on the left hand side, we're not really going to see a change. But when I hit the button to actually drop one of these entities, in this case, I actually couldn't tell which one it was. But if we look at the actual components on these entities, we can see we have an item cloud here with a display name or a display image and an item of as well as a name, same for cross. And we can see that bars actually got the mesh 3D in the standard material and any required components that needed to come along with that. So if we look at these other two, as we go through, we can say, okay, drop here. And you can see how cross dropped out, right? And now we've got a little cube with that cross on it. Or this time, the cloud dropped out. So we actually can have an inventory for a 3D world where when we remove that component, all we need to do is decide how to render it and it will drop right where we want it to. So that's relationships. This is a little demo that I built that I debated actually showing. Uh, the code for this one is a little bit messy, so I don't know if I'm gonna put it up, but this uses relationships in a couple of different ways. The setup here is basically we've got a ballista GLB, a selection GLB for the ballista, UFO GLBs, as well as selections for the UFOs. So four different GLTF files effectively. And we're using relationships to associate what should be shown on hover and doing that traversal. And then we're including a targeting relationship so that each of these ballistas can then target any of these UFOs. And remember, these are one to many relationships. So these UFOs can be targeted by many ballistas. But if we try to say, take this ballista and move its target, it changes. Like it can only target one UFO only got one ballista shot, right? But each UFO can be targeted by multiple ballistas. And then these gizmos are just showing that relationship. And here you can see the definitions for those relationships. They're not super interesting. They're basically the same as all of the others. So we have a bunch of targeting targeted by link to linked entities, you know, make visible when hovering, make visible on hover. They all come in pairs. They're all basically the same setup. And we're just choosing to insert them when they're necessary. So in this case, We've got a number of ships that we're spawning. Here's the root, the UFOs. This is our root entity. It's got a transform, it's visible, and it's got an enemy component. And then we get the ID for that entity. We've spawned some children. In this case, we're observing with a scene instance ready observer with that link root to go find some stuff and attach it. And here we're just inserting the relationship component directly. So this one's getting make visible when hovering as a relationship. And this one's actually getting any mesh inside of the GLTF file and attaching a link to component. That's this function here in case you wanted to see it. Trigger scene instance ready. We look for any of the meshes in the descendants and we insert the link to with that entity ID. 
So these one-to-many relationships can kind of just refer to anything. They don't need to be anything specifically. Um, inventory is a great example, I feel like. Targeting can also be. The three examples that I just went over will be in the Bevy Examples repo. I'll link that in the description. Uh, and if you have any other relationships questions, throw them in the comments. I kept this pretty much on the usage side of relationships, not really the defining side. We didn't talk about implementing them manually or anything like that. I feel like most of the relationships that people are going to make are just going to be very much like this. And the only other thing to really know when you're defining these is that you can choose whether these will despawn recursively or not by defining whether they are linked spawns or not. And that's relationships for now. I'll see you in the next one.